quick demonstration of the health bar finished product. When we touch this, we're taking damage. It's doing 95 damage. When we press Q, we're healing. And then you can see that the health bar is adjusting and you can take damage and gain health. Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna go over how you can create a health bar in Unreal Engine. Now, I do know that there are lots of tutorials out there that show you how to do a health bar. And in all fairness, to do a very standard basic health bar would take you about 30 seconds. Um, maybe not literally, but it's extremely quick. It really just requires a integer or, or a float variable and a progress bar in your UI, and then you make it go up and down. Um, it's fairly simple on that end, but what I'm gonna do is kind of go a little step further. So I'm going to create my own UI widget, which is going to be that health bar. And then we're going to take that widget, put it onto the canvas. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to add a actor component, which is going to attach to our player, which will contain just basic stats. Really, it's just going to contain health and attack. Um, very basic. I'm just going to show you that it can exist. You can go about doing it whatever way that you want. And then we'll also show you how you can add and subtract your health to that progress bar upon stepping on something that's going to deal damage and then pressing a key that will heal you, which could in fairness be like a potion if you had one. Um, so yeah, just a little bit more practical use on how to utilize the health bar and not just telling you, here you go, you built it and then move on. So yeah, let's get into it. Right, so hopping just straight into it, I'm going to do the very quick, easy way that you can do this. So I have this open over here. Let's just do Q key. This is going to be more of a speed run for here. We're going to do widget blueprint user WBP for widget blueprint. Let's just go with HUD. Keep it basic. Grab this canvas. Throw it on there. Get a progress bar. Throw it on here. Anchor to the bottom. Let's just do 400. Nope, sorry. 200. 800. And 0 0.5, 0 0.5, negative 200 with 150. No, um, 300. We'll just move that over here. Okay, negative 200. 500. All right, maybe that's a little too large. Let's do 150. Okay, variable, we'll call this health bar. Right here, we need to create a binding. Let's just do boom, boom, boom. I'll begin play. Great widget. What did we call this? Health bar? No, we called HUD. Player controller. Add a viewport. I didn't actually need this yet. That'll be later on. So, boop. With that, that's created. Now we gotta link up this. So what we'll do is create two variables on our player. Health. Max health. Flip this to float. Flip this to float. Player character, cast to third person, health, max health, and need to divide this, divide, I think this has to go on the bottom one, plug this into here, okay. And then let's do a print. Just 
just in case. It'll just show us if this value is working correctly. All right. And then we want to go into the player character, select on health. We need to put the value. We'll do 50. That'll count as half of max health. Saving. Let me get rid of this window. Hit play. And we'll see that we have half health. So cool. We have a health bar there. Let me actually bring that Q key. And we'll get this minus. Let's just do 10. And set. All right, hit play. Hit Q, health goes down. Hit Q, health goes down. You see the prints on the left keep going. But nonetheless, you get the point. That is a very quick rundown, super quick. And now I am gonna delete all this shit. Get rid of all of this. All right. Still be utilizing setting the max percentage. But nonetheless, we're going to also delete this health bar. Going to leave the canvas panel because that's great. Good to have. Um, I'm not going to create a widget off of begin play because honestly, in, in an actual game that you're making, you're most likely not going to do it this way. Um, if you do, then cool. I don't like that. That's a little odd for my taste. So next, I'll go in a much slower pace. What we're now going to do is show a bit more of a longer route that I prefer. And what I'm going to do is now create my own widget. It's going to be a user, user widget, stumbling on words, and we'll call this health bar. Now this health bar will be easily able to adjust, change. Uh, if we wanted to animate things, whatever it may be, we'd be able to go straight to this widget instead of just slapping on a progress bar on our HUD. If you actually notice on lots of tutorials, they'll have like multiple different widgets and then they just all put it in the HUD, but they don't really go that far into it on what they actually did to achieve that. So um, separating your widgets into its own widget. That was terrible wording. Nonetheless, I think you understand what I mean. All right. But anyways, we're going to basically do the same thing. We're going to slap a progress bar back over here. And then we're also going to grab. Hmm, you could add text. You could slap text on it. I believe we'd have to over wrap with. Um, you could wrap it with like an overlay, I think. Yeah. Grab. Common text. Now I use common UI for everything. You can just grab normal text, but I prefer common UI because you can also set the style. I haven't created one for this yet, but nonetheless, um, the reason I see common text is because I have a plugin called common UI. All right, we're gonna set this to fill. So it's gonna fill up this space. And then I'm actually gonna change fill screen to custom and then let me shrink this a bit. Height, I'm gonna do 200, or let's go 150. And then width, 800. This is kind of my desired height for it. For my text block, I'm actually gonna center it on both. We're gonna leave that as is. Under text block, I'm actually gonna just blank that out. Progress bar. Let's change the variable name to, um, I actually don't know the naming convention for a progress bar. Uh, I'm just going to name P bar right now. I'll probably leave a note on what the actual one is, but nonetheless, progress bar, health bar. Honestly, I could probably just say health bar right now. We'll leave that as is since it's its own widget. We probably don't need anything super crazy. Okay. So for this text, looks good. Now, we need to bind it. Now, 
Let's leave it as is. We'll get to that. Progress bar. Sorry, we named it health bar. We'll slap that on over here. Anchoring it to the bottom right. Changing alignment. What is this, like 550 minus 200? And 150 by 800. Okay. These are just the dimensions that I also put as my desired over here as well. So they relate accordingly. And okay. So you also notice that you can't set the percentage or the text. And that's because I actually haven't done anything in the health bar. And that's why I kind of moved over here to kind of show you. So now we're going to go back over here. And what we want to do is bind these to a new variable, promote this. We'll name this to health value. Make sure it's instance editable. We're going to also go back to designer and we're going to do the same thing with the text. We'll go to bind, create binding. And then you can also do promote. And we'll name this. Let's go with um, TXT health bar. Okay. So that looks good. And then also you will notice that if we actually were to remove this binding, you actually can set this directly to the variables. Now this works perfectly fine too, because if I were to select text health bar, that works great and I'll populate. The only reason why maybe you don't want to do that, because maybe you want some special formatting. So if you wanted to display the health, but in front of it, you want the text to say health semicolon, and then the value of whatever it may be, you'd have it through setting up here and not just straight to this text. So that's why you can do it that way. But once again, use your best judgment, whatever is most useful to you. If it's less effort plugging that in and you don't actually need to, then go ahead and do that. That works great. All right. And the reason I have this as a separate widget, because at any point in time, I could go back over here. Maybe I want to do some animations for it and I want to move around. Uh, it's just a lot easier to go directly to this widget instead of having everything bunched up into my HUD and then having everything in this graph being completely cluttered. So that's why. OK, so from here, oh, we'll look like the health value is being shown, but Got to do the same for the text. So let's hit compile on both. And then awesome. So now we have health value and text bar. Hmm. Actually, scratch that. I am going to go different. So I planned out part of this, but I didn't flush it out completely. So what I'm actually going to do is hmm let's leave this as is and what i'm going to do is now create the actual stats into the player and then we'll revisit this in a second so i want to kind of go a different route so we're not going to be using these variables you absolutely can if you want to want to do that but i prefer um something that Ryan Leahy does is he sets everything in components and it kind of separates things. And I love that management. So we'll go into create blueprint. We'll hit actor component, AC, and then we'll name this as just stats. And then opening up here is where you can shove your variables. So we can do max health. Health. And let's just do damage. Could have just turned one to float first and then did the others after. So from here, 
Now we got our stats. Let's add a component AC stats. And then, oop, looks like we need to set some default values over here. So let's do 100, set 100, not 200. We'll set current health to 50, just so we see a value. Actually, let's do 75. And then damage, let's just say five. Let's see if that updated over here. Yeah, cool. So now we have our default values that you see here. Okay, back to health bar. What we're gonna do is let's go to health bar percentage first. Delete this. I'm actually gonna get player character. Cast a third. Gonna do the same thing. Max health. Oop, sorry, we've gotta go AC stats. Max health. And health. And then you can do divide. So this is one route we could go where it would just plug in here, or we can give AC stats a very basic um, function over here. Let's add a function called set health bar. What we're gonna do is, I wonder if it'll, no, it actually won't, Never mind. My thought process was maybe I can copy all of this, but you cannot. Just grabbing that divide for some reason when I could have just grabbed it again. Plug this in. And return. Bam. Another thing is that instead of casting, you could also use a um, Blueprint interface. So you could do something like get component. Um, by class. And then from here, you could do something like uh, whatever the blueprint interface was, and then you could just do the message from here. I don't have a blueprint interface here. So um, if this was like AC stats, and then you called whatever the, the function was, you'd be able to then just put it here, like set health bar. So instead of casting, you could do like this. And plug it. All right, and then let's actually bring our print back out. And let's see how that looks. <laughs> we missed a very important step uh, we haven't created. So I'm actually not going to create on begin play. I'm going to now make a new blueprint. We'll name this HUD. And then from here, we'll select HUD here. Name this BP HUD underscore. Let's name this just like in game. Don't need a viewport ever and never touch that in this. And then on begin play, this is where we'll do create widget. We'll now select, let's go with, what was it called? A HUD. WB HUD. That's actually a terrible name. Let's rename this to player HUD. Okay. Get player controller. We'll add to viewport. And then we'll actually have to go back over here because we need to now set this HUD. Oop. In here, 
to what was it in game? I think I set it to, and then let's hit play, and then bam. So we got a health bar there. As you can tell, the print strings just go on endlessly, but that is just to show us that the value is there. So this is working as intended. So you didn't actually have to cast anything. If you have blueprint interfaces, you, instead of say, doing the set health bar, you could just do whatever the blueprint interface was using. That is most likely the route I would go because um, love blueprint interfaces. For some reason, I'm saying blueprint weird over and over again. But nonetheless, now we got to do text. So for here, we want to now go back to this. Let's name this health bar value. I'm actually going to control D and we'll change this to text. Oop. All right. And then text I don't know if you can do set text um, change this to text and plug that in there we go so now let's copy all this or just this part actually scratch that wow my brain okay moving over here deleting that plugging this in set health bar text and let's just plug that Oop. gonna rename this to health bar text and health bar percent Awesome, let's hit play. So you also notice that it's saying 75. Because that is the percent that we actually plugged in. Now, oops, sorry, I accidentally hit F1. Instead of doing a percent, what if we just want to show the current health? We could go back to our AC stats, get rid of all that, and then plug it in. Because obviously, you're not wanting to show the actual stats. Uh, the actual percentage, you want to show what current health they have. Another thing you could do is that you could also grab max health. Do the same thing. And if you wanted to pass that along, you could plug that in. So you have a return of both the health and max health in text form to pass along. I am not going to be doing that. So we'll do here and let's hit play. So I have 75 health. Next, we want to be able to subtract and add. I'm going to create a very, very simple. Let me grab this box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this box hurt me when I touch it. Um, convert this to an actor. Actor. Let's name this BP damage box. Um, sir. Oh, I can't select on actor. All right. Static mesh actor, whatever. Um, jokes on you. I'm moving it to an actor. And then cute. I could have just created my own thing from. Oh, that's not the one I wanted. You know what? We'll make it a cut. Okay. And then from here, we want to add a collision box. Er. Maybe I shouldn't have done a cone. Sphere. Not sphere. Collision. Capsule. Scaling this so it's going to be a bit larger. 
that look good enough? Yeah, I think it's covering most range. And then from here on an actor begin overlap, we are going to now go into AC stats. We're going to create a new function called subtract health. And you could do like add health. From here, we want to add an input. Let's do um, added value. And then from here, we're going to do the same thing. Subtracted value. Float. And float. All right. So if we're going to add health, what we need is to get our current health. And then we're going to add both together. And then we will set our health. Now, the only thing with adding health is that we want to also make sure it never exceeds our max health. So we want to get our max health and say greater or equal. So if health is ever more or equal to max health, we'll have branch. From this branch, if health is ever exceeding max health, we want to set the current health to max health. So that way our health never exceeds what the max health value is. And then from here, we're going to do something similar to the subtract, but kind of in reverse. So we're going to subtract the value. So we're going to do subtract. Plug that into health. And just make sure this subtract value is at the bottom because we're subtracting it from the health and not the opposite. We're not going to need this. We need to make sure that health, let's see if it is less or equal and plug that in. If that is true, we want to set health to zero. What that means is that we never want our health to be like negative 20 because you're dead. You go to zero um, unless you want them to have that value for some reason. Um, we'll do that. All right, so let's go back to let's see. Health bar is already set up. We shouldn't need to touch that. But over here, in the damage box, we're going to cast to third person. Cast succeeds. We will get AC stats. And we will subtract health. Let's move this down here. And you can either subtract it by whatever value. We can also promote this to a variable and call this box damage. Compile. Let's just set this to five. So whenever we overlap, we'll take five damage. And let's go back to our character. Let's do the Q key. When pressing. We'll get this and we'll do, uh, what was it? Health, add health. And then from here, you can also have a value. Uh, I'll just do like 10. All right, so let's go into this world. I'm gonna press F11 to enlarge it. And then Alt P to start. So I have 75. Boop, taking five damage. And then I also press Q and I'm gaining. 
And you'll notice I'm at 95, I press Q, and now I'm at 100. It would take me a long time to honestly die here. So let me change this to 95. Bam, and now I'm at zero. So I can heal myself and damage over and over again. So just like that, we have a health bar. We have stats that connect to that health bar. Uh, I know this is a lot more information than any other of the health bar tutorials, but I really hope that at least it shows you how you can utilize a health bar, um, an actor component, as well as attaching UI. Now, not everything I do, you have to do. It's stuff that I learned that I didn't really have anybody show me, especially during my early times. So I hope that was useful. Uh, if you guys enjoy these tutorials, any type of feedback, I love to have it. It really lets me know what to do further or what to just cut out, uh, as well as feel free to join the Discord, uh, like, comment, all the other self promo stuff that you typically hear right back at you. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope it's helpful. See you next time.